Hello everyone, Victor here. In this video, we'll be talking about how do we measure death in perspective. Now, we will look at three methods of how we can do that and how we can do it proportionally. Now, the first one will be the easiest and the last one will be a little bit harder. Now, for this video, you'll need to know a little bit about perspective already, so just the basics and most importantly, about the vanishing trace. So I have a video on that already. It's quite a simple um, principle, but you just have to know it to understand this video. Now, measuring depth is very important and we're gonna see why in this video. So without talking too much, let's talk about how to measure depth in perspective. Okay, so let's start with this first method, right? Which is diagonals. We're gonna use diagonals to measure depth. And so if you didn't know already, if you draw a shape that has four lines that connect to each other, and if you draw the diagonals of this shape, so here it's, a, it's close to a square, that intersection in between will be the center of this, all right? And so it works also for shapes like this. So rectangle here is the exact same thing, right? And so imagine there was a chest in perspective. So a chest that would look something like this. Perfect. And that other side goes towards this vanishing point. All right, so there we go. We have a chest. And if we were to look only at this plane, right? So only at this plane, straight from here in 2D. We will know that at the middle, there is a lock, okay? And that we also know that there is pattern here on the side. And these two patterns are evenly spaced, right? So here, there is the same space as here and here. And the exact same can be said for here and here, all right? So they're even and equally spaced. So let me erase that line here. And so perfect here. How could we find where the lock is first? Well, we would need to draw the diagonals here. And so here we measure depth inside that cube or that, that, that quadrilateral shape. And so here we know that the lock is gonna be here, precisely here. And so how do we know where that pattern is gonna be? So these two patterns, how do we know where they're gonna be? Well, this rectangle, we've divided it in two. So now we're gonna need to divide it in four. So we're gonna take this rectangle and do the same thing here. And draw a vertical line that goes from the center to the outline of this rectangle here. And so that pattern would be here. All right, and the exact same, same thing, sorry, can be said for the other side. Center is here, so we're gonna go straight vertically and draw this one. All right, so here we've measured depth inside a 3D shapes. Let's take another example here with a ping pong table, for example, in one point perspective. So I'll create a little bit more like this. So we're gonna add depth to this and we're gonna erase that line here. All right, we know that if we're looking from above, right? In 2D, this looks like this. And we know that there's a net in the middle of it and that there is a line separating the two planes here. All right, well, first to find that net, we would just need to find that center. And from that center, as this is in one point perspective, we would need to go horizontal. And now we can just draw vertically. And now to find this line right here, we need to find the center of, of the planes we've divided in two here. So we'll do something like this and we can do the same. We'll look something like this and it will go towards the vanishing point here, which would be here. And we just need to draw and so there we go, we have the lines. So we've measured again, depth inside this ping pong table. So let's look at the second method because here we can see that there's a big problem, right? If we wanted to replicate that exact same case or chest in three point perspective, uh, in two point perspective, sorry. Well, we wouldn't be able because with this method, we can measure depth inside, inside it. So we can't go outside with this method because we're drawing diagonals inside the shape. 
So let's look at the second method. We will show you, which will show us, sorry, how to do this. We're gonna use the same principle, right? Imagine there was a row of lockers. So we're just gonna draw in flat perspective here. A row of lockers that were exactly the same. So they were even and perfectly equally spaced. So there is no space in between. So they're equally spaced, right? And so here we can even draw this. So the knob of the, the door of the locker. And so here they're exactly the same, right? And so how could we do that with, for example, this square? Well, first we could just say, okay, this, we just have to measure this out and say, okay, this is 1.5 centimeters. So we report that and it goes like this and it stays here. And there we go, we have the other one. But this doesn't work in perspective because in perspective, we know that it's gonna get smaller. And so this measurement is not gonna be the same as this measurement, right? It's gonna get smaller. So it's gonna be something like this in perspective, right? And so here, there is a method actually, right? If we were to take this one, and if we were to imagine a big square that takes the two lockers in inside one, right? And we knew that, all right, this is the middle. And so we draw a horizontal line that goes like this, horizontal, horizontal. And so imagine this is a big square, right? This would be the center of that square. And this would be the diagonal. This would be the diagonal and so we know that this is where it stops and so we've managed to create that same locker without measuring anything so now we can apply that same concept in two point perspective so in 3d so here we're gonna create a locker and so there we go it goes here and all right perfect and so what we would need to do is to draw okay we need to find that center of this that's the center okay perfect and then we would just draw a line that goes towards the center and towards the vanishing point there we go we're gonna create these lines so that these are used as landmarks all right so now we have a line that goes from this center to the center of all the lockers that are coming so we know that this line is going to be the center of all lockers. And so what we can do with that information is say, okay, we're going to imagine a big square that takes two lockers inside of it. And so the big square, the middle of that big square is going to be here, right? And from here, we can do the exact same thing. We're going to draw that diagonal. We're going to go straight vertically down and like this. And so now we have that same locker. We can draw that 3D shape. We have that exact same locker here. Can even draw the, the needle or the, the handle of the door and so there we go and we can do that same thing forever right? we, we go from here we know this is the inter intersection right with this line and we draw a diagonal again vertically down and we do that same thing here forever and so again and you see that it gets smaller and it gets so much smaller that at the end you can't even draw it because it's such a small shape that it's impossible with this but here we're encountering two problems right the first problem is that these are equally spaced and if in real life for example most of shapes are not equally spaced and so if we were to draw a locker that was here for example how would we do it because here there would be a space here and that space is not in the pattern right it's just gonna keep on going and keep on going smaller, smaller, smaller. But we couldn't, we wouldn't be able to draw this one alone. We, we would need to draw all the lockers and get to this point where, okay, this one is there. And the second problem is that here we can see these are lockers, but imagine if that was the locker and there was space in between or a wall. With this method, you wouldn't be able to do this because it would just report this locker and do the exact same thing here so it would stop here and there would be the locker and it wouldn't consider the wall and so with this third method which is the best i think we're going to figure out how to do it all right so there we go we have that locker and now we're going to say that that wall 
is gonna be about this big, right? So this is set as a reference. All right. And so now we have this pattern of, okay, this is the locker, this is the wall, and this is the locker. But here, if we draw the diagonals of this one, for example, right? Or we wouldn't even need to draw the diagonals, right? You see that these, this diagonal is parallel to this diagonal, right? We're seeing it from here. But on this plane, on this uh, two-point perspective, it's going to create a circle here. I'm drawing it freehand. Exactly what it would look like. Precisely, not precisely, sorry. And we would see that this one, they would converge somewhere. And that's, if you remember about the vanishing trace, right? It's the principle of just rotating that image. And we, we see here that the horizon line gets vertical. And so we would draw the vanishing trace that goes like this, perpendicular to the horizon line, right? And so let's look at where it converges. Converges about there. And we would see that for this one, it would go out of the canvas. And so here, a little trick you can do is take only a portion of this. All right. And with this portion, you're gonna see, okay, this is the diagonal and we're gonna draw it like this. And the exact same thing for the little wall here. And so this is the vanishing point for that wall. And this is the vanishing point for the locker. And so if we were to continue this, okay. All right, perfect. And we would see that, okay. We know that uh, we also need to draw this one. We know that from here, it goes to the same vanishing point as this one, right? So it would go like this. And like this and there we go we would have the locker the exact same locker here and we would do the same thing for this one take it like this and so there we go and imagine as this was just space or windows and between the windows there was a wall anyway i, I still hope you learned from that video and that um, you found this video helpful for your perspective uh, knowledge and also for joint perspective I'm planning to post more videos on perspective and also um, a video next video will be about uh, others method uh, more advanced method of uh, measuring depth in more advanced problems so if you want to know a little bit more about uh, perspective I recommend you follow this channel and keep up to this channel and stay tuned because more videos like this are coming but anyway I'll see you in another video thanks for watching